Welcome to Agile to Agility Podcast with Milan Bayic. Major show alert! The very first value we wrote is individuals and interactions. Let's take this to another level. When you go to the graveyards and if your eyes could be open, you will see amazing dreamers that died with their dream. Do not die with your dream. Make it happen in this one lifetime that you have. Make that big impact in the world. We are all created to bring a change to the world. Be that change agent. Who is Anu Gopal? What's been your journey? (laughs) (laughs) That's actually a very good question. And um, so who is Anu Gopal? Well, I'm a woman of many parts. Um, You know, that's what I called myself. Um, I'm a family woman. I've got three kids, lovely, beautiful kids. And um, I'm also a wife um, with a very supportive husband you know, that keeps the own front when I'm in Africa. Wow, Anu Gopal is also a dreamer. I'm so passionate about human capacity development. And I also believe that anyone can achieve whatever they set their mind to do to become who they want to be and do whatever they want to do, especially even in an uncomfortable conditions or situations, especially um, if you know a lot about Africa. Um, Anu Gopad is also a touch bearer. Um, I move through the world in search of other people to light up, especially women. I am so passionate about women, maybe because I'm also a woman. <laughs> and my soul also draws strength, strength from serving others and lifting them up. So um, as a dreamer, I, I just want to touch lives. And that's actually the theme of Africa Agility Foundation, touching life one breath at a time. Um, I'm also a chain catalyst, and I truly believe in people. I'm very, you know, altruistic. Um, so the happiness of others actually influences my happiness. What gives me joy and fulfillment is when I see others, especially those, are my, those that are my mentors, those that I've touched, you know, um, achieving their goals, their dreams in life. Um, Another part to Anu Gopal is I'm a philanthropist. Um, I continuously seek to impact lives, you know, around in the world around me. Um, My family and I do a lot for orphanage homes in Africa, especially in Nigeria, in the rural areas. And Africa Agility Foundation, myself and my team, we run free programs for kids and youth in Africa, Nigeria, you know, in partnership with Sudan Next Gen, led by Sally Elata, we are moving to Sudan, also Kenya and Ghana to do so many amazing things um, to improve quality of lives and also improve, uh, reduce poverty and Mm -hmm. also unemployment for for youth in Africa. Um, That is awesome. Yeah, thank you. Other side of Anu that most people know is I'm a business agility coach, a trainer, facilitator, a speaker, and everything about agile agility. That's another side of Anu. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's inspirational too. Like, you know, the stuff that, it, like, I feel a little bit of uh, guilt. Like, you know, I came from another country that's, you know, former Yugoslavia and Bosnia specifically. And I've tried to help and justify my own ways that have helped, but like, I think you are inspiring me in the sense of what you're doing. Like, and uh, it tells me like that, not, not, uh, that, that I should be doing more to help people where I'm from and, and contribute more. Uh, so uh, thank you for doing that. At least that has uh, sparked a little bit more <laughs> fire in, uh, you know, doing a little bit and giving more back to, you know, where I'm from. Um, and you were just recently in Nigeria for the Lagos Girls Tech Boot Camp that you organized. How did that go? Well, it was revelational for me. It was mind blowing, insightful. It it was a new experience for me because the first one we did last year, 
um, COVID happened. So I joined them virtually via Zoom. Mm -hmm. And although we don't really have much COVID cases in Nigeria, I, I don't know the magic that happened. They were able to contain it. And um, so they had it in person, but I was here. But being there physically was a new experience for me. Um, with the two weeks plus I was in Nigeria. And what made it revelational was I've come to understand that the young people, not just in Africa, but every part of the world, have the power to bring about the much needed change especially when they have the right vision, the mastery, and also a sense of purpose. You know, I saw 100 determined, you know, audacious, courageous, and resilient female youths, you know, despite all odds, you know, against them. You know, some of them are undergraduates. Majority of them are graduates with no job. The employment rate is, unemployment rate is very high in that part of the world. You know, they believed in their dreams. They have passion for tech, although they didn't study tech in school. And they worked so hard during those three weeks to bring that dream to, future, to fusion, so to, to reality. So it was, it was mind blowing, you know. Um, and during that three weeks boot camp, you know, they were trained in the field of um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, web development, data science, UI, UX, and also two days certified Scrum Master class. Thanks <laughs> to Scrum Alliance for that. And GC Fellow for facilitating it. It was free for the girls. And um, so, but the highlights of the boot camp, and this is where the magic happened or miracle, um, whatever metaphor that we want to call it. You know, for those two days, they use Scrum, doing daily Scrum to develop D2 solutions to solve the top three complex challenge that we have in Lagos, you know, Nigeria. Lagos State is the most populous and the most thriving state in Africa. So I in my yeah. there was, what they walked into the boot camp with no prior experience in those six fields. Mm -hmm. And they did magic in two days, daily scrum. That was like, wow, <laughs> miracle happened, you know, happening in Lagos. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and what, what really, where, where the moment of humility comes for me and also um, stepped in for me and also deep appreciation for the girls and their talent was, the state governor was at the grand finale, which is cabinet wow. members and um, some of the MDs of corporations. He applauded the girls, like of, of their dedication, their creativity, you know, saying that you guys, you know, when they were doing the live demo of the three data solutions across e-health, waste management and traffic management, he said, you know, he's been thinking about this with his team, his cabinet members in the last two and a half years, like this is a problem, we need to fix it, we need to do something about it. And mm -hmm. what they've been doing is talking about it. But in two days, you girls, we're not like us. He actually used the word, you, you, you ladies are smarter than us. You, <laughs> <laughs> you solved our problem in three, in two days. What we've not been able to do in two and a half years in his, in his position. So it was revolutionary. I, I was humbled. Well, yeah. But it's also, I, I think, uh, it, it, I mean, like what's going through my head now is like more like uh, uh, just how, uh, uh, we can enable as a community like of trainers and coaches so like those girls now have some experience or they've been introduced similar like i don't know that maybe we can go back to how you were introduced to agile and scrum 
but like you know now they can become change agents in yeah. the most populous <laughs> part of the africa and you know be those change agents that uh that, that you you are and that uh they can inspire others and i think that's uh, in, in a complex world, uh, and especially like we're in areas like Africa, I think, and some uh, different parts, not just Africa, different parts of the world where like we need more people to embrace empiricism, embrace like what we talk about in technology and, and just, you know, solve these uh, problems. And uh, uh, what did the girls say? Like, I mean, like, do, do you have any stories like from... Uh, 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 you know them sharing it you know their takeaways with you and like how they were touched and influenced well all the stories are on africa agility um social media platforms the the girls were very appreciative of the opportunity because it's so expensive to run programs like this mm -hmm. and you know not having the financial support makes it difficult sometimes um the fact that there is an organization that cares so much about them, that cares so much about their development, their growth, and, um, and also a path that can create opportunities, especially job and you know, entrepreneurship opportunities for them um, was what they were looking for. And Africa Agility Foundation gave them that opportunity, opened that door for them. A good example was one of the girls that came for the boot camp last year, she spoke to our boss. She was any less than $100 per month. You know, the currency has changed, is really poor. So, and the boss said, sorry, whatever you want to go and learn has nothing to do with what we do in our organization. And she resigned. I love dreamers. I love go-getters. She resigned. She left the job. And it's not really easy to get jobs in Africa if you have one old on tied to it. It doesn't matter even if the pay is not that good because you need to take care of yourself, take care of your family, you know. And two weeks into the boot camp, she actually shared what she has learned, the, what she has built on social media. And before the end of the boot camp, she made times five of what she used to make when she was working in that company. Wow. <laughs> and there are so many testimonials like that. Even at the grand finale, you know, five of the girls got employment with, um, with an aviation company in Nigeria, so called the MD was there. And he saw the innovation the, the girls created. I'm like, oh, I'm hiring you, some of you ladies. <laughs> And, and right now, I was told on Saturday, every Saturday, there's a program that happens like a form of mentorship and mm -hmm. for the girls. And the MD of a company came to speak to the ladies, and I had 10 of them on the spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, the, I mean, that's, yeah. that's the impact. But you're also creating platform. I wanted to talk, like, I, I think it's impact, but also, like, uh you know like having scrum alliance and having you know what you're doing uh with the agile africa and agile africa alliance and helping bring people together create a platform for people could you maybe talk about that a little bit and bring some light to that because i think uh a lot of times and for a lot of us it's where you create relationships where you meet others where you learn new things so um how's uh you know, Agile Africa and uh, Agile Africa Alliance bringing people together and how is that helping with this broader movement of bringing or exp in a sense expo exposing people to these agile methods and thinking and ways of working in Africa? Yeah, so Agile Africa and Agile Africa Alliance started back um, in 2000 and Towards the end of 2017, then kicked off, you know, um, the first quarter of 2018, you know, we saw a gap and we saw a need. And that is what actually birthed um, the platform. And that was before COVID, now that everything has gone virtual. 
So the platform was was for um, for growing a community of diverse African professionals, right? One thing about Africans um, is we love education, right? Our parents, we do anything, even sell their houses, their cars, whatever they have to send <laughs> us to school. The part of the world that I came from, first degree is not, is not good enough, <laughs> you know? Um, I, the state I came from in Nigeria, you know, it's PhD, but I had to tell my dad, sorry, the best you can get from me is master degree. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going towards that route. So education is very important. So, so we have a lot of educated professionals in Africa. So is it just yeah. education? It seems like, you know, it, it, it's uh, expectations are high in general. Uh, and expectations that, are very high. There's nothing yeah. like college fund or there's no college debt, <laughs> right? So expectations are very, 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 very high. So, yeah. um, you know, and the dream was like, Agile is not that popular in Africa. You know, what can we do? to introduce this new way of working, this new way of thinking, everything around agility to Africa. And that's what this, that platform. And with this, with this initiative, you know, we are able to connect Africans with a global agile community. Um, mm -hmm. The resources are mastering, you know, bringing thought leaders um, in the space, you know, to come and share their experiences, their wisdom, you know, everything around agile, innovation, professional coaching, you know, personal development and branding. And, and the goal actually is human capacity development and also to facilitate the needed transformation that will sustain Africa economic growth. That was, that was the dream. So it's much and bigger. I mean, it's bigger. It's, it's how do we, yeah. Yeah, sorry, what's your question? No, so it's like it, like uh, uh, it's much bigger than just software. It's much bigger. It, it, it has to do with, with with the problems, real problems, in a sense yeah. that our people are facing. Uh, you mentioned Sally Alada. Who else? I mean, like in the community is uh, you know contributing and to 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 uh, you know helping with uh, uh, with bring agile agility to uh, and the, the mindset to people in Africa. Oh, there are so many. There are lists of. <laughs> That's great to hear. Maybe what, who are some? Maybe to just to name the few. Who are some of the ones that you're closely working with and uh, you feel uh, deserve to be mentioned? So, uh, well, everyone deserves to be mentioned. <laughs> but you know, if I stay within the Scrum Alliance community, you know, we have um, just a farewell. We have Bob Galen. Um, we have Sherry Silas, we have uh, Michael De La Maza, and I'm blanking out right now. <laughs> you know, oh, MJ, I remember MJ talking about yeah. different kinds, different types of teams. And we have also a lot of people outside. We have, look, look, um, Oman, yeah, who yeah. is not really a Scrum Alliance person. He was actually our second speaker. We have, um, my former boss at Toyota, Nainje Tolo, he actually graced the platform um, as our first speaker. So we have different people from different parts of the world <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. that has supported this movement. And there are some other people that have, you know, supported us financially as well, mm -hmm. especially bringing agility to Africa. The youth in Africa are agile. To be mm -hmm. honest with you, we've gone through a lot of things <laughs> and resilience and, you know, adaptation. In mm -hmm. Africa, you have to quickly adapt. So we are born agile mm -hmm. in, in Africa and we've received a lot of financial support, moral support from a lot of people from the Western world. So mm -hmm. um, a great thanks to many, 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 many of them. That is awesome. And I think, you know, uh, something resonated, you know, we're agile. I think, you know, when you, 
uh, grow grow up in a country or in a part of the world where like there's a lot of competition. I can only imagine in Lagos uh, in Nigeria where you, it's highly concentrated, especially in Lagos. Like you, you know, it, it, it's like probably similar to any big city, but it's like you gotta figure things out. Like nothing's given to you. There's so much competition, yeah. and like um, uh, it, having experienced that, I think uh, it's it's demanding like no there's there's pressure there's like it's a lot easier to grow up in a smaller town and like I've experienced that too Mm -hmm. uh um as far as like also motivationally like you know you can succeed so it motivates you when you have a lot of people so like embracing that uh, (laughs) agility and empiricism and just trying to figure it out um and you fail a lot but you also learn a lot uh uh, it's uh, it's a, it's something that I've been thinking about. I still don't know best way to express it, but it's it's that environment, uh, like almost like a, a, a boiler pot type of environment where like things are constantly <laughs> a brewing. Changing. It's yeah, it's <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting, and uh, there's something to innovation. There's something to learning in that type of environment where it forces you. You don't have an option. Mm-hmm. not to figure things out you have to like you know nothing's given uh, nothing is given uh, there's no yeah. there's no privileges right yeah and you need to be agile to survive mm-hmm. <laughs> and like yeah so it's it's uh maybe we'll come back to this topic but there's something there that it's been kind of marinating in my head as far as <laughs> what's going on uh you were the first black female African to achieve both certified team coach and certified enterprise uh, coach through Scrum Alliance. Uh, why was that important for you and for Scrum Alliance? Well, um, well, the importance of that for me wasn't about the certification, mm-hmm. but about making a difference in my community, right? Um, you know, and the CTC, the CC was just a confirmation of my accomplishments in the agile coaching world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, throughout my career, um, and I'm sure you would have observed this as well. I've been to classes, trainings, workshops, um, local meetups, conferences, and there were only a few people that looks like me. Mm-hmm. You know, a few years ago, um, when I embarked on this journey, of both certifications, we only have a few handful of Black people on this Scrum Alliance Guide level. We only have the Morrises at the um, Certified Scrum Trainer Trainer, level, right? And I can't even remember if there was any Black person at the CEC or CTC level at that point. I, to be honest, I can't remember, but that was the motivation for me. You know, I see a gap. And I and this become a mission for me, a mission to help um, to help others that looks like me, other Africans to to start this journey, to inspire them that it's it's possible, it is doable. It's you know, um, of course, it's it's a long journey with a lot of learning, um, mm-hmm. with a lot of growth, and the growth the growth and the opportunity to improve myself personally, to be a better me and to be a better coach in order to serve my community and the organizations that I consult for was was the motivation for me. And right now with the other five black level guide, um, we are motivated. I mean the certified agile, sorry, CAC, certified Mm -hmm. agile coaches level. Um, guides at SCOM Alliance, the six of us, we are motivated. We are starting a program in in September and October to bring the African-Americans and the African community together and support them on this journey Mm -hmm. that we did it and we believe that you can do it. And we are here to guide, to mentor, to support you in achieving your dream because this is a dream to many, many, many people. And also the accomplishments, you know, was like a huge opportunity for me to be a role model, not just to Africans, but also to women, 
mm-hmm. right? Women, minority women, that you know what, well, this is a path for you. This, this, not just an opportunity, this is something that you deserve. Mm-hmm. You know, and and you can start this journey, especially having, you know, going through the process, the experience, and I understood what it takes to become a CTC or a CEC level, you know, supporting the women, the African male and female, you know, in this part of, of the town that I am, and also, in diaspora that you know you can achieve these two destinations you know it belongs to you it's you know it's it's your right that's the word yeah. I'm for. it's your right but it's also i agree and like you know i like you know i was talking to both bob and uh the bob gallon and sherry says um you know in a sense like you know, diversity wise, both, uh, you know, from all perspectives, but it's also like, you know, being able to uh, bring different experiences and the diversity uh, to the guide level. And sometimes like I even, I was joking around like first then, like I didn't think about diversity and who like with my podcast in a sense, like it started as like, Hey, I want to have these, you know, and it was mostly like in my head, it was mostly these guys like that would have beers with. And as I started enjoying the podcast more and more, I'm like, who else would I want to talk to? Like, who else have I spoken be- before? And like, you know, for instance, I, you and I have interacted a couple of different times where I brought you in to speak. And I'm like, you know, I, knew, I also don't want to force it. Like, I don't want to just, you know, bring people on just to add to the diversity. Like, I want to be able to talk to people that I feel like are doing great stuff and do it. But at the same time, like, you know, I can uh, see my biases come out. And like, hey, I want to talk to guys or I want to talk to these people. And, these, and like, it requires us to be a little bit more self-aware, I guess. That's why I'm going with this, of what we're doing and what we can do to help others. Because uh, as you know, especially in the Scrum Alliance community, having people, mentors and people that can help you is mm-hmm. night and day as far as like how you can succeed and how you can join the community and all of that. So if people don't have that platform, for instance, like what you're creating or just seeing, hey, you know, can I make it? Is it even possible for me to make it? So Mm -hmm. the more that people see and the more that we create equal opportunities for people to get mentors to to, to, uh, these opportunities, I think the richer our community and not necessarily just uh, Scrum Alliance, but in general, outside of Agile. Um, So... Uh, you know, reflecting back, it's it requires all of us to be a little bit more conscious about what we're doing and be more proactive about. And I'm trying. I still like. I'm saying like, you know, I'm reaching out. I, you know, I'm working with Bob, and I'm like, you know, uh, but uh, he was sharing, you know, some of the things that he was doing. He's like, you know, I don't know if you know the story where he was talking about how his daughter was pushing him. Yes. Like, <laughs> you can say you support it, but what are you doing about it? Like, what steps are you actually taking? to make a difference and that resonated with me too like uh same way that you you know at the beginning of this conversation you said you know these are the things that i'm actually doing to help people in nigeria and africa not just saying i support you but i'm also doing it through these actions and uh uh, i I think that's a good example of uh (laughs) you know not just talking but actually following through with some action so that (laughs) that's inspirational to me Thank, um, from you that. So, thank you so much. You know, my my experience with the work I'm doing in Africa, you know, consciously made me to be self-aware, right, of the role I am playing in the evolution of, of the human systems, right? So, you know, I've, I've always believed that, you know, Africans are the only ones that can solve their own problems. Mm-hmm. And, and the Girls in Tech initiative really confirmed that for me. You know, because I see transformational change happen for these girls. What they need is connecting them with the opportunities. They are ready. Africans are ready for change. We we easily embrace change, mm-hmm. but we we have that limited opportunities compared to the Western world, and we are readily available 
you know, for, for different types of opportunities, the different types of change, right? That you think technology will change things because now, like, you know, it, it's skill, right? And it's easy yeah. to connect with people, it's easier to work remotely. So uh, I'm assuming that'll create more opportunities. Um, I actually just hired somebody from Nigeria to translate, not translate, but, you know, I'm creating a uh, 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 transcript of the, uh, uh, you know, and it's easier. I have hired people from back home uh, as well. Um, so, like, it's easier to, like, it's a global market, right? Uh, and, and it's interesting how, like, you know, uh, <laughs> another thing that's interesting, I don't know. So, like, when I work from uh, uh, people uh, back home, I prefer to speak in English than in Serbo Croatian because it's easier for me, especially in business terms, express. Mm -hmm. But the point that, that I'm trying to make, it's like communication wise, now like everybody speaks English. So like, it doesn't matter where you are. Like the, the person that I'm working from Nigeria is, you know, fluent in English. And yeah. they're, they're, so the, the competition I think is increasing, but it's also creating platform for people across the world. And it's been like that for some time now, but what do you think from your perspective is, uh, how is uh, COVID and uh, technology uh, creating more level, uh, leveled field when it comes to, uh, you know, the work? And, and yeah. So technology has changed the way we work, um, and COVID actually enforced that for for everybody, every organizations um, in in every parts parts of the world. And like you said, most parts of Africa, especially in Nigeria, we speak English and we speak fluent English because we are colonized by British. Mm -hmm. and, um, and with technology, people can work anywhere and work for any organization in any parts of the world. And, and when, when you read what's, you know, the, the, if, when you do more research about what people are saying about Africa right now, you know, it's becoming, Africa is now poised to be um, one of the fastest growing regions in the world. And what this means for Africa is maybe we're going to be, we're going to be the new China, right? We're going to be the new India. We are going to be the hub for human capital. So with the news and what we are seeing and, we, and the way technology is changing the way organizations are working right now and the way people are working right now. Sally Elata, who mm -hmm. is the founder of Sudanese Jane and also Africa Agility, my NGO, we've partnered together to start a new initiative called Africa Next Gen. And our aim is to make Africa the next destination for day to job outsourcing. So mm -hmm. if you go to Africa Next, N-E-X-G-E-N, Gen, nextgen.com Next yeah. you know so we are developing youth in africa with the right skills for them to be able to compete with their counterparts in the western world and you know um organizations employers can hire um talent from african especially the youth for day to jobs and also invest in growing entrepreneurs within africa in the year of covid about 200 startups were birthed in africa in the year of COVID, when most organizations were shutting down, the African youth, like I said, they are agile. They saw, they moved away from white collar jobs that doesn't exist. And they started, you know, they saw opportunities, innovation, you know, using their creativity. And they came up with companies that can help to solve the complex problems that we have in Africa. Mm -hmm. And right now on African Next Gen, organizations can hire um, talent, African youth for DT jobs in customer experience, agile roles, core masters, product owners, they are, they are certified. They've got the professional certification. They've gone through mentorship and the opportunities for them to grow. They can hire in mobile and web development, um, d to marketing, robotic, data science, like all our graduate mm -hmm. from girls in tech and also QA and automation testing. So we have those skills available and we have those talents available. So we are looking for organizations in the Western world. Come on, 
hire this amazing. <laughs> oh, and, and I think thing, it's yeah. Another thing about Africans that we are very very hard working. I don't know if you have ever worked with an African. You know, normally when a job is nine to five, if we are not done with our work, we 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 just want to deliver value and result. Very very hard working. It's in our DNA. It's and I think uh, like so I grew up with uh, uh, immigrating to the United States uh, as an immigrant like you know w- w- uh, I went to ESL classes here I came you know and, and went to high school and even college and like uh, uh, I had more in common with people from Africa and Asia uh, than than you know when when we moved so like and I think it's you know something that you said I think it's. Uh, Africa is a great example, but I think it applies for those that are listening. It's, it's not just for Africa. I think, you know, uh, there are parts of the world that have similar situations where like people are eager and they see the potential, how they can contribute to the mm-hmm. problems and to the economy uh, globally. Yeah. So uh, there's so many parts of the world uh, that, that, that are eager to, 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 <laughs> To, to be part of this bigger movement, I think that that's, uh, uh, you know, around solving, you know, uh, all kinds of biggest, I mean, biggest problems in the world. And I think it's an exciting time too, because I, I think it's a, in the next 10 years, it's only just going to get bigger and bigger. And we're going to see um, the potential of what we can do when we have more people and more diversity uh, across the globe, uh, engaged in solving problems and getting, you know, rather than just one parts. And yes. uh, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I, I, I feel the, the buildup. Uh, and it's not just now, but I think COVID has really triggered it. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, 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 to uh, come back to, uh, 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 to the question from earlier, like what can uh, we all do to improve social and uh, professional equality? Like what are some of the things for those that are listening and including myself uh, that want to know in what ways we can help uh, with uh, the social and professional equality? Well, well, they are, to be, to be honest with you, um, privileges and ranks would only show up consciously or unconsciously, especially if you are in this part of the world, the Western world. And four things that, few things that came to mind for me is, you know, number one, we have to be consciously um, aware of the way we show up you know, Mm -hmm. at work and also in the community. It's not about color at all, Mm -hmm. right? It's about showing up the way we want people to show up for us. Mm -hmm. And and secondly, um, you know, we should learn how to give the gift of love, the gift of care, you know, the gift of support to the community, regardless of the color, the shape, you know, if, if even the field, right? You know, we go out, we meet people. What, what do we do? Do we put smiles on people's face, right? Especially those of us that we came from Asia or Africa and maybe we live in this world. There are so many things happening in our parts of, the, of our world with our family that bothers us a lot that we so much care, care for. And also, you know, living and working here with you know, with, with the way some people behave, um, I don't want to go to, you know, I yeah, I don't want to mention some few things, um, yeah. but we should show up with love, with care, with, with, with support, you know, every day think about what gift do you want to gift others? You know, how, how do you want to put smile in the faces or in the face of one person? How do I want to touch one life today, right? And another thing that came to mind is, yes, we know that we have a lot of challenges. We have a lot of issues in, in, in developing countries mm-hmm. or continents, you know, um, and most of the time you hear bad reporting about, oh, this country is this. You know, every country have its own vices. We have our own problems, our challenges. You know, we should start yeah. promoting the good things you know, that is happening in, in developing countries, in some other parts of the world. And also with COVID up, 
happened last year and of course COVID is still in the space right now, you know, we should, um, people should show interest in, by learning more about the needs of, of other people, the people we work with. Even when you go online, you can find out about how we can improve social and professional um, equality in Asia, in, in Africa. You know, we, what can we do to support? Mm. Right. So it's really about like, I mean, like, as you're saying, like all I'm, uh, you know, and what I'm hearing is empathy, empathy, right. Empathy, and experience. Yeah. But I also tell people like, it's, uh, it's very difficult to empathize if you're not willing also to, in some ways, put yourself in that experience. Right. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a fine line between, well, it's not a fine line, but for many people it is, um, uh, without truly understanding uh, what people are going through or what they've gone through. Um, and for many people, like we only, and including myself, I mean, like, I know, like, if I really want to understand what I knew uh, is thinking and to truly be able to empathize with Anu, I have to put myself in her, like, see through your eyes, you know, mm -hmm. and experience all you know, and, and try to understand what you grew up with, how, what sh has shaped your worldviews, your perspectives, in order to truly uh, 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 be able to support and, and, and see things from somebody else's perspective. And I think a lot of times we don't have that experience. We don't have that platform to, uh, I can say I support, you know, diversity, I support this and that. But if you, like, uh, this goes back to what I was saying, like, I have to do something about it. I have to try to do something about diversity. I have to, only then will I start getting a small sense <laughs> of what, what that is about. You know, it's not just talk, 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 but uh, put yourself in a position where you can learn more uh, about really what, you, what we're talking about and what other people might be going through. Yeah, exactly. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of, People saying, oh, we are supporting diversity and inclusion and equity. And it's all about talk, 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 talk. Mm -hmm. And there are different ways that we can support, right? People are hungry. People are, oh God, financial sponsors. $10 is a big amount of money for some people. Just that gift of $10. There are different NGOs. There are individuals making big impact. Share your knowledge. You don't have money. Mm -hmm. But you've got something here, right? Share your knowledge. That's a gift that we can give to people. And I'm going to be a bit personal here, right? For the African next gen, we need mentors. We need trainers in all those skills I've mentioned, communication, emotional intelligence, leadership, just name it, D2 marketing, customer experience, you know, empathy, empathy mapping, lean product development, Aja, you're a CST. Right, you can offer free certifications. You know, you, you can give the gift of coaching, leadership development, because these youth are leaders, not just of tomorrow, they are leaders of today. There are so many things that we can give. We are looking for sponsors. We are looking for companies to provide paid and unpaid internships for, for the youth that graduate from African Next Gen um, initiatives. And also in September, we are having another um, Girls in Tech. Right now, I'm desperately in need of financial sponsor. It costs a lot of money to run the boot camp because it's a passion for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my husband and I, and with a lot of Africans, um, individual Africans, they are supporting this movement. You know, we are going to launch um, a donation, crowdfunding, or any one of those out there. $50 means a lot to us. Support this movement. You know, mm -hmm. Neil Jan, we've trained over 200 girls. We've trained up, sorry, about 200 girls, of which 50% of them are in employment right now. That's the impact. That's 15% of them are either freelancing or they are tech, um, tech premium. 
One of them is actually consulting from company in the US and she lives in Nigeria. This is the smile that we want to put on the faces of these girls. We want to close the gender gap in technology. Right now we have 25% of female, 75% of male, of which only 3% are African-Americans and, Amer and Africa. And the percentage, the ratio of African women in technology is 0, 0.0 something something percent. Yeah, which is crazy. I mean, you know, that's the world that we live in. And when you look at the numbers, um, it, it not just there, everywhere. It's just, it's like, um, it, it is insane. And uh, it, 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 in a way, like, how can that be good for innovation? How can that, if it's so, <laughs> you know, it, uh, homogeneous or, uh, you know, um, so... I think, you know, uh, uh, getting us, uh, you know, our community that you and I are part of, getting Scrum Alliance, getting everybody just to understand, do a little bit, even that 50 bucks, all of the trainers, we all can chip in a little bit, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but well, I'm uh, coming to you. I'm, please. I'm just waiting to create it and post it on the TCC group and LinkedIn for my guide level families and, you know, and families and people that cares about impacting lives in Africa mm -hmm. to support us. You know, I spoke with, I spoke with um, when I was in Nigeria and I'm going to see um, one of the top lawyers in, in Africa. There's a state in Nigeria that, that there's a city that what the girls does at the age of 15, 17, right? It's for the parents mm -hmm. to send them to for prostitution in Italy, mm. that's, that's the business. When you get to the age of that, that's, that's how the, the family, the parent live. It, a small city in that part of, of the country. And the dream of the man is, you know, let's do, let's bring girls in tech to this city. And he said, you know, I'm going to do everything possible to sponsor you that. If we can touch the lives of just two girls, yeah. Stop them from going to from going to to Italy for prostitution. That's that's Huge, that's yeah. the biggest achievement for him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Wow, whatever it takes, I'm ready to do this." Those are the testimonials. Those life is tough. Very, well, that very too, tough. man. It's it, it's like. Uh, it also tells you about the environment. If, if somebody is forced to, to do that, it tells you about the environment that they live in and how many, what type of options they have. So if we can just give people uh, uh, and, and girls options not to consider that or even be motivated, maybe that's, you know, mm -hmm. something's going to say there is a potential here for me or, um, you know, this is how, uh, you know, I see myself and, uh, it is. And I think it just comes to all of us uh, 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 being more conscious and being more uh, 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 actionable about what we're doing. It's easier to say, even as it goes back to what I said about beginning, uh, I, I donate back home in, in both like financially as well as like I support the communities where I'm from. Uh, but I still know that I can do more. And uh, that little or a lot that I do, it, it can make huge difference. And I can get others like what you're doing, getting others to evolve. So uh, uh, this conversation, at least for me, is opening up. Again, it's going to come back to me and doing something about it. But <laughs> it is helping me get a little bit more motivated and put, put some more things into uh, action um maybe uh, uh, like i wanted to ask you this earlier like just on the fun side but like you've been doing like you know and helping organizations outside of it adopt agile and scrum could you maybe share some of the uh, stories or <laughs> areas where you've uh, helped uh companies outside of uh it wow yeah. okay so well Oh, I can give an ex I have so many examples, and I'm thinking in my head, <laughs> what which example should I actually give? And um, the one that came to mind for me was um, Capital One. Mm -hmm. So I 
I was an agile coach within the IT department in the small business and international car departments. So um, the, the leader of the business team, um, and when I mean the business team, this is where the bankers, the credit analysts, underwriters, booking and funding, like the people you talk to when you're looking for loan, mortgage and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, said, you know, I love this agile thing that you guys are doing. I could see, I could see improvements. I could see sustainable change. I could see quality improving and, you know, morale and all those benefit productivity that comes with agility. And he said, oh, I, I want to do the same thing for my business team. And I said, okay, what problem are you trying to solve? You know, the usual questions that we ask. And he said, you know what? The turnaround time for customers, you know, business customers to ask for loan and for the loan to be deposited into the account is like, oh, I don't want to give number because this is, um, <laughs> I, we want to reduce the lead time, right? Yeah. The, the language, I will call it. So, you know, started with, you know, um, training, you know, just a bit of orientation of what Agile is and blah, 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 blah. And they decided to form a cross-functional team, a cross-functional team of bankers, um, credit analysts, uh, booking and funding, and an underwriter, part of a team. They call it, they, they do daily audio, daily scrum, daily stand-up, yeah. but they call it daily audio. Where they meet every morning, it's, oh, yesterday I decision XYZ loan. Today I'm going to decision this loan. Or, oh, yesterday I spoke <laughs> to a customer, you know, some documentation we're missing. And today I will follow up. I have impediments. I do have impediments. So they form a small pod. So they call it pods. Oh, yeah. And they became more collaborative, you know, they work together as a team. For an example, a documenters have a lot of documents to review. And and an underwriter is less busy. Okay, oh, I can support you. You know, I can help you. So they started working, that teamwork, the real mm -hmm. teamwork, the real scrum teamwork started happening. To cut the long story short, they were able to become 40% faster. Mm -hmm. And that was an amazing- Crazy what happens when you just put people together and let them figure things out. <laughs> They just figure things out. Yeah. It's just collaboration, the power mm -hmm. of team collaboration. Mm -hmm. Mutual accountability. Oh, it's not my job. You are the one reviewing documents. No, we mm -hmm. are a team and we are in it together and we succeed together as a team. Mm -hmm. That power. That, it, yeah, and it goes back to like, you know, even some type of conditioning, what we're used to, like in organizations, the way the organizations have been set up. It's like uh, we, we've been untrained uh, to just collaborate and figure things like, you know, we a lot of times we've been trained to take orders, especially in some countries, you know, coming back to some of the um cultural aspect maybe yeah. you know it, it, it's like you know that's how you've been conditioned that's what's expected of you so like to just get together and figure things out it's it's like it, it's a normal thing but it's not a normal thing in <laughs> in a uh, 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 in a you know business setting so yeah. uh, that so maybe be true, uh, you know because in Africa right yeah if I'm older than you, you don't call me by my name. You call me by my initial. You say AG mm -hmm. because, because of that culture of respect, it's disrespectful for, for, for me to call someone that I'm older than. It's very disrespectful for me to call you, oh, I know, like, what? Yeah. So <laughs> we call by initia. So that's a sign of respect, that culture. Mm -hmm. that culture it is and i mean it's, it and we could uh, I, I would definitely love to get your thoughts about like how the cultural aspect and as a global uh you know uh workforce now we have company culture but we also have global culture like you might have teams from all over the world that have that come from different backgrounds different cultures and how's that impacting their team culture or company culture but We'll save that for, uh, we're almost here out of time and it's crazy how time flies by always here. <laughs> but what is, uh, what are some of the things, what would you leave the listeners with? What, what is the message that you would like to leave everybody with? The message I would love to leave, that I would like to leave everybody is 
find something that you can give back to the community. There are different things that we can do to support the community. You know, there are different things, there are different gifts that we can, that we have within our capacity and power to give. You know, it doesn't have to be in Asia, it doesn't have to be in Africa. Touch a life every day. You know, and another thing I want to leave is everyone has a dream. Don't be one of those people that we, you know, take their dream to the grave without achieving it. Believe in your dream and make it happen. You know, just step into your superpower and bring your dream to life. Find people that can support you. I have the best team in the world in, in Africa. They do most of the stuff. What I do is to look for money. <laughs> I have the best team in Africa that makes things happen. Find the best people that will share and believe in your dream. They will support you to achieve it. I always tell people when I'm talking to the youth, when you go to the graveyard and if your eyes could be open, you will see amazing dreamers that died with their dream. Do not die with your dream. Make it happen in this one lifetime that you have. Make that big impact in the world. We are all created to bring a change to the world. Be that change agents. <laughs>